let's go back to Street Angel, right? This, this is, is where town now. This is where, okay, right, exactly. This is where we come to San Jose. So tell me, just tell me, what's the secret origins of Street Angel? Street Angel comes out in about 2003. I had been making mini comics. I had gotten, you know, I'd grown very far away from like the Marvel DC characters and that style of storytelling. I found alternative comics and I was doing mini comics. It was at a bad time in the comics industry, the early 2000s, the late 90s. We used to joke that you'd go to these shows like SPX and it was one $5 bill that would just pass from table to table because we all just traded our mini comics with each other. So I spent a couple of years making mini comics, auto bio stuff, weird stuff, nonfiction, things like that. And finally, I decided to make a superhero comic uh, because I, that's what I grew up on. I loved them. And I was tired of what I was seeing at comic book stores. It felt like it was just the same, all the same. And so Street Angel was the opposite of everything that I was seeing at comic book stores. And I made a mini comic. And in the process, I started working with a writing partner, Brian Maruka, who I still work with. Um, very nice to have that. Um, and we generated several ideas, more than an issue, but we only, you know, we made one issue. And I took it to my next mini comic event and it sold out right away. And that was different. You know, I'd been doing these shows, four or five of them a year. I kind of knew what to expect. And when it sold, it told me that other people, you know, I had something, people were interested. So I came home and thought, I want to make more of this. People like it. I should find a publisher because I think, you know, at that point I had been doing it for a couple of years, you know, comics. And I felt like this was good enough to have a publisher and be seen by more people. Okay, and state enter, labor graphics. Enter f important figure in indie comics. Like, let's name good. name. Let's not talk slave labor graphics. Let's talk my pal and fellow Dan Dan Vaughn. <laughs> yes. Okay. So Tell Dan me about Beto, and and slave labor. Tell me about that. He goes back to the black and white boom explosion of comics in the mid '80s, and he starts publishing. He's a creator. He's writing comics. Samurai Penguin, I believe, was was the first. SLG publication and cut to the early 2000s. At that point, he had done like Joan and Vasquez's Johnny the Homicidal Maniac was one of their top selling books. And it was kind of like this goth humor, great comic. Um, he also published Evan Dorkin and Dork, uh, one of my favorite comics ever. So like, no, geez, right? All, you know, like when you start looking at SLG's catalog, you'll be shocked because they published a very uh -huh. wide range of comics, you know, like yeah. you'll know them for whatever comic you know them for. And when you start digging, you'll be stunned that like it's every genre, it's tons of great cartoonists. Um, so I knew enough about, about what they published to look around comics and be like, this is the publisher that is targeting more readers than the typical publisher. And that's what I wanted. It's what I've always wanted. Like comics should be for everybody. And so I, I followed, <laughs> I followed their, uh, submission guideline online and I sent it I sent them exactly what they called for and a week later Dan called me and you know he was on board and, and off we went so that was my first real publishing experience they did five issues of Street Angel I think 2004 to 2005 something like that and uh from there that kind of got the eye of a lot of other people and it led ultimately to me doing the Plain Jane's graphic novels at DC Comics with editor Shelley Bond that was their young adult um imprint <laughs> 